Hello everyone and I hope you all are doing well. Welcome to another fantasy match preview. This is for the game between West Indies and Scotland and this is powered by Fan to Play. I have with me Nikhil bhai today who's going to help us understand everything right from ground dimensions to the expected playing 11s and who's going to be your playing 11 in this specific game. Welcome Nikhil bhai and we hope we can have a great preview. Yes, uh, hopefully everybody is doing well Sri Lanka too. Uh, just summed up we talked about this tournament being the Jay, Jay Mataji tournament and the very first game has told us that why conditions hmm. adapting to conditions are important. We talked at length about how the ground conditions, everything matters a lot. We saw a lot of Sri Lankan batters trying to make use of the shorter boundary, but they got hmm. dismissed in that in that uh, lure. So again, adapting to surfaces will be important. I don't see any clear favorite. Uh, in the two games that we are covering uh, for the uh, upcoming one. But how about now? Different venue. But again, yeah. I think in Australia, there will be a general some rule that it is okay to bat first. Because of the conditions that are there, uh, usually there isn't any enough view to make batting very easy in the second innings. So that said, you know, average score remains the same around 165, 170. Because yeah. there is some help for the Pacers up top. We discussed that in Geelong as well and I'm expecting the same in Hobart as well. There will be some movement early on. Right and again this ground is pretty similar in terms of dimensions. You can see that one side is pretty short and then everything else is evened out. So do you see again dimensions playing a big part because we didn't really see too many shots being played in that region that were successful. In fact many catches ended up happening in the regions in the first game where the boundaries were shorter. We we lost your voice. It's uh, cracking a bit. Your voice is cracking a bit. Your voice is cracking a bit. We'll have to. Uh, can you just reconnect with the with the mic or just uh, put your uh, laptop mic maybe? I'll do. So anyway, till he reconnects, I feel like as far as these dimensions are concerned, these kind of square dimensions are those type where they actually lure the batter to play a shot in that region. And that's where when we actually say that spinners are at a disadvantage, which is when dimensions are shorter. But when you're not, not playing against teams that play spin particularly well and they're trying to target that boundary itself, that can actually be the biggest advantage for the spinner themselves. And here, like Nikhil Bhai is mentioning, pace can also play a big part. So the first game that we're going to see between West Indies and Scotland, both teams are known to have good pacers and someone like Holder can also get really good bounce out of this pitch. All these guys hit the good length very hard. So it will be very interesting to see how that pans out. And yes, we have him back with better audio now. Yeah, I think wire is better for us and life. But yeah, <laughs> so as you uh, rightly said, uh, dimensions are still far more symmetrical yeah, hmm. but you still get good pace bounce uh, on offer. And a lot of the fast bowlers in both the games that we saw yesterday as well, they got enough out of the surface. So oh, I think that the same will continue today as well. Fair call. And uh, let's get to the team with that. And before we show you guys the team, there's something that's coming up on the 22nd that you all must keep your eyes on. So the fan to play leaderboard is going to start from the 22nd. Basically, you have some time to warm up and get a chance to play on the app before you actually get into the race with all the big teams once all once four of these teams have qualified and also keep in mind that you can join from the refer code that i have on the background here and you'll get some bonus cash and a lot of deposit bonus too yes truly and you can see gare bulari here which you talked about the advantages of playing on fan to play you can make a very uh, comfortable team in terms of the visualization that you have and uh, make multiple combinations. These are the games. This entire year has been of grand leagues. So make the most of multiple combination. Take your risk, back your instincts, and you could really get a good rank. Yes, absolutely. And on that positive note, we'll get to the team preview for today. So first up in the keeping section, and maybe we want to already start with a surprise. I think that Matthew <laughs> Cross is a decent option here. And why not Puran or Charles? I think Puran is batting in the middle order. Maybe if he's batting first, you can take a chance on him because he might get decent opportunity with the bat. 
but batting second especially with how the pitches are going we don't know what's really going to happen or not happen so i i prefer the guy who's batting first and cross is not known to play very high risk cricket so maybe we can get stable or amount of points out of him especially with puran not being in form and, and uh, i don't like to talk too much about johnson charles so nikhil bhai will enlighten you on him uh, i think mercy is in in the entirety are the proper jaymata dit uh, side uh which reflects mm. in the way they bat i think in that scenario may maybe somebody like a brandon king or uh, even shemar brooks if he plays now that there is no hetman those guys would become a fall safe or a safer option for you to try because mm. you know they are not going to go really crazy up top uh mayer still does take his time and uh, but i still prefer mayer's batting second uh puran again mm. as virin bar actually said first batting mein agar aapko lagta hai ki wo upar batting karenge और और कोई नहीं चलेगा और वो चलेंगे तो बिल्कुल आप उन्हें लेके जा सकते हो पर इवन विद चार्ल्स वो एक दिन चलेंगे पढ़ो कौन सा दिन है वो तो अभी वो खुद भी नहीं जानते तो दैट इज द रिस्क यू रन विद टेकिंग मिस्टर स्टॉप ऑर्डर सो आई थिंक आई आल्सो साइड विद देयर ऑलराउंडर्स मोर देन द बैटर्स राइट सो बिफोर back up the batting now that he spoken about the ऑलराउंडर्स लेट्स गो अहेड एंड पिक द ऑलराउंडर्स जेसन होल्डर एंड ओडियन स्मिथ and in the bowling do you feel like this kind of this kind of bowling attack will actually suit a venue like hobart because all these guys alzari and if you see holder ordin all these guys will hit the deck while obert will bring you a variety with a little bit of slow ball and variation yeah i think if they adapt to the surfaces i think west indies have a good enough uh, variation in their in their uh, bowling ranks the problem for them has is going to be the batting how are they able to bat around this particular bowling lineup because we saw what they did in australian uh, t20is they did show you that okay you know they could really do a lot of damage to many teams but uh, it's going to be about how they bat because the bowling is good enough they have good proper fast bowlers who can use these conditions well and they also have a mix of guys who could use the slower balls wells as well so the combination to rahega but the responsibility will lie on the likes of kyle mayers Evan Lewis hasn't played, which is surprising. Uh, but hmm. very keen to see if he plays, he becomes a very, very, very big player for them. Right. So let's see if we can take Evan Lewis in this team for now. We have six West Indians and one West Indian slot left. Now, do you favour Puran in this last slot, or do you take Akil Hosain because, like you mentioned, Scott? Then I have a lot of right hand. I think Scotland, uh, as you said, they have just one lefty in George Munse up top. So mm. and Akil is still a decent option versus him as well. Uh, so if and because you know he's going to reverse it more to put him off the line. So I think it can be planned better. Akil is more likely to have a say if George gets out early, then he could potentially bowl to a lot of mm. a line of right-handed bats. So that way, if you see, it's a far more return on your investment. as compared to puran who is very very risky in terms of how he plays the game even if the target is like 100 or 150 he's still going to go for his shots so but at that time you actually just mm-hmm. want somebody to you know really just get a handy 30 40 then the time the number of balls doesn't matter so i think that's the risk that you run with puran uh, so if bowling first i feel akil usain right. is bowling first maybe he's a better punt to take on fair call so on that note we complete our seven west indian players now we have three more slots for the scotland players and i think we can start with the batters so callum mcloyd or george munsey who's your pick from here uh, i think george munsey classifies directly as how the his counterpart is uh, in terms of johnson charles because that's mm-hmm. how they go sometimes they steady then they are really lethal but they will give you chances early and the same is what i expect from george uh west indies have enough pace up mm. top to trouble him as well on the short stuff so very interested to see how he plays i'll probably take him in my grand league teams only uh unless he's chasing and i'm very sure that you know west indies will not trouble mm. him so in those scenarios i'm still happier to back george munsey but otherwise i think i'll back the middle order uh callum mcloy or richie wellington and you know if i feel that okay maybe i want to drop one west indian all rounder for another another uh, all rounder of sorts from mm. uh, scotland then i might be tempted to even go with a um, lease or a what whoever plays because these are the guys who can contribute with the bat too so 
Uh, mm. That's the call that you can take. You also always have the option of going with a Bradley Veal or a Joshua Davy with the ball, but that has to be. You have to be very sure what mm. how the game is going to go because Josh Davy is somebody who enjoys bowling in the second innings. But you know Bradley Veal mm. more than me now. You've made him captain in many games, so maybe you can talk about him more. But that's the bit about you know these players. They are they have very specific skill sets. And when they come good, they'll come good yeah. bunches. So that is the uh, you know uh, benefit of backing them because if they come good, we'll be right up top. Two things that I like to cover here is one Richie Barrington versus Akil. Then will be interesting. Barrington might be born. So if you feel like Richie Barrington will be victim to that matchup, then you can actually try and take least. And if Wheel is bowling first, then don't be surprised if he's still vice captain. He can read it for me because of what Junaid Siddiqui did to them in the practice game. But yes, for now I'm going with Barrington and Wheel in that last slot. But it's least, especially if he bowls second, because then if he's batting first, he can get handy opportunity with the bat too. Yeah. He can be a very good option. So that will be something worth considering. On to captaincy and vice captaincy. I think this will be the easiest section of this game because mm. I don't think too many will sway away from Holder and Mears. But do you see someone like Akil or Alzari as captain, vice captain for you in any scenario? So I think you can definitely go with any of the paces uh, that are there in this game. Uh, if Scotland bowled first, mm. we discuss Brad Wheel. You could potentially also go with someone like a Joseph who does better in second innings as well. So uh, there are plenty hmm. of options. I think Mayers might remain a constant. Uh, with Holder, I, I'm really unsure of how they use him now. Sometimes he gets ball up top, he bowls three, uh, when they play him out, and then he doesn't get the fourth over. So in those scenarios, Holder becomes a bit tricky. But uh, safest option is Jason Holder and Kyle Mayers. But you could always try Akil, hmm. Aljari, Obed, everybody. So you know, in that scenario, you have plenty of options, even so from Scotland. That you could go with Barrington, you could go with McLeod. Uh, we discussed Bradley mm. with Joshua Davy. Uh, so plenty of options there as well. Fair call. So that rounds up our team. Like you can see on our screen, we have gone with one keeper, three batsmen, three all-rounders, and like we know and like we love, four bowlers. <laughs> now we have a player to watch out for. One player from Nikhil Bai, and then I'll tell you my one player. So over to you, Nikhil Bai. Tell us your one player who, even if might be two percent select, is for you dream team cap. Uh, I think we did discuss about uh, we did discuss about Brandon King being a very good option. Uh, okay. Shamar Brooks, if he plays, I think he could do that uh, kind of a holding one, job for one. them. So. I, hmm. I think it's a it's a call between King and Brooks, whoever plays at three. I don't Similar, know okay, one of the two, whoever because, plays. Okay. Yeah, hmm. because Lewis ka form, I'm not sure if Lewis will play. Hmm. If that, if he plays, then your okay. batting lineup changes completely. So. Hmm. Right. So Nikhil Bai is one player, one between King or Brooks, whoever plays. My one player for this game, Akil Hussain. And again, if he's bowling second, will be captaincy, vice captaincy material for me. So don't be surprised if when you open the Telegram channel tomorrow, Wheel and Akil, yes. and yes, that rhymes too. So maybe there's something in the making there tomorrow, our captain and vice captain. But on that good note, we'll end today's preview. Thank you so much to everyone who tuned in. Tell me your dream team captain right now yep. in the comments below. And do share this video and do like it if you actually like this content. Thank you so much for yep. tuning in and have a great game. Have a good game, guys. Take care.